Okay, so could you please say the station ID? Hi, I'm Coyote Linden, and I'm a senior software engineer with Linden Lab, and you're listening to the Drax Files Radio Hour with Joe Yardley. And this is, in fact, the 100th episode of the Drax Files Radio Hour. Isn't that exciting, Coyote? Isn't that exciting? It is. It is. And you are not on this show. Why not? You know, I'm kind of a backstage guy, you know. I, you know if, you, if I do my work right, you know, you don't see what I do. But, you know, when their sims run smooth and things are happy, that's, that's how they know that I've been at work. You're not on the 100th episode, but you must be on the 102nd episode talking about Project Bento. This episode, Veer and Oz are going to talk about Project Bento, and it's coming up. And I, I should shut up and play the theme music so that people can listen to it. Um, but since I have you here, what is your biggest wish of Project Bento? I would love to see people combine the new digital bones uh, of the hands with mocap and do ASL in Second Life. Do real ASL. That's just like, uh, you know, I mean, it would take a lot of work and a lot of, but I, 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 that would be, in my mind, a great thing. But as far as what content creators, you know, might or should be doing, surprise me. Use your imagination. Thank you, Coyote, and, and Happy New Year to you. 2016 will be huge. On with the show. Hello there and welcome to the Drex Files Radio Hour with Joe Yardley. My name is Drex the Dupre. Joe Yardley will be here shortly because today is the 100th show of this very podcast. We indeed made it to 100 and uh, we taped a uh, live show a couple of days ago and Joe was of course uh, co-hosting with me and a whole bunch of guests on that very live show that we will play shortly. Um Coyote, who you heard in the station ID, Coyote Linden was not a guest. That's why we put him, we put him in the ghetto of the station ID. But Coyote will be on this show uh, in 2016 because he was instrumental in the Project Bento uh, thingy that we'll discuss on the show today. Before we go to the edited version of the live show, let me just say on this occasion of show number 100. Thank you, listeners. Thank you for sticking with us despite our various uh, twists and turns and to, as some allege, uh, obsessing too much with uh, Oculus uh, in particular and then VR and not enough SL and then uh, not enough AR and then again uh, too much AR and whatnot. So we're trying to <laughs> do the impossible and please everybody in the sense that we want to be a community podcast that is very much centered in Second Life, but then goes outside a little bit and brings in other people, other uh, newsmakers in, in the technology, in the field of technology, you know, broadly speaking, researchers in social science that study worlds and study technology uh, just as much. But anyway, thank you, listeners, for, for listening, for writing in. Uh, also, direct IMing me with questions, concerns, with with um, suggestions on who to come, who to bring on the show. Thank you, sponsors, you make this happen. Thank you, individual sponsors. I mean, this is really so important. Uh, you know, it's a hundred linen dollars per month for individual sponsors, but it's it's a it's an important sign if you can spare that those dollars to show that you care and that you value. Uh, the work that we put into this show. Let us know, though, um, for next year. More SL, more VR, more Project Sansar. Uh, let us know about the ratio, the ratio of content. I made a few notes here on my uh, paper, old school, uh, what I want to talk about. Anyway, it is Christmas time. It's holidays time. Uh, we're not engaged in the war on Christmas because we're pacifists on this show. Um, but uh, we do say happy holidays because we want to be all inclusive. So we're going to be taking off a little bit, but we're going to put on a uh, best of podcast in the next few weeks. Um, let's roll the tape of the live show that we recorded a couple days ago, recorded at the Firestorm Viewer uh, Archipelago of Islands, the conglomerate of islands, the, the corporate <laughs> headquarters all decked out in Christmas uh, fabulous Christmas uh, looks and uh, with red sofas and everything and a uh, bunch of special guests showed up as well. Let's start with introductions. I asked the, uh, our guests uh, to introduce themselves from left to right and uh, here we go with the first guest. 
Um, I'm Kiana Reiter. I'm the owner of Mappy Productions. Hi, I'm Kes Crystal, and I'm marketing director at Mappy Games. And let me just say before we go to the next person, we're recording this show live. You, dear listener, who is listening to this as a podcast um, on Friday or or thereafter, um, you may have been here in the audience or you may not. So this is a live show. This is the 100th show um, or is Inara Pay from Modem World blog calls it the 100-ish uh, show, I guess, because we ran a few reruns and technically um, some people may object that this is actually the 100th new show. Well, you know, any excuse for a party. I think so. And it's the it's the year end big show. Uh, after that, there is going to be some reruns because we're going to be on vacation. And Joe, you're back because you weren't here for for a few shows. Uh, so it's well worth a 100th show. And you also get a baseball cap. You get a 100th uh, special baseball, Drax Files baseball cap. If you click, if you're in the audience right now, you can click that weird object in the back next to the snowman and get yourself a baseball cap it's 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 not a weird object it's a big num it's big it's not a weird object it's just a big 100 number it's a it's a 100 number yeah we should describe this because we're on the radio so it's a 100 um number a one a zero and a zero with a baseball cap hanging over the one let's keep going with the introductions here i'm sorry i i uh, stopped right before a very special guest uh, i think uh if I'm not mistaken, the owner of this location, and you are? Um, I already got my baseball cap, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> oh, hi, Jessica Lyon, uh, project manager of the Phoenix Firestorm Project. And next to Jessica is? Hi, I'm Ed Merriman. I'm the uh, uh, support manager for the Firestorm Project. For Firestorm. And next to Ed is? My name's Canary Beck. I'm a blogger and designer of immersive experiences, and I'm here as the marketing manager of the Firestorm Community Gateway Project. And uh, my role is to create opportunities for SLers to share their love of SL with the wider world. The wider world. Sorry to to I just stepped on you there, Canary, because your name tag shows "Do Not Disturb." That's a little disturbing. You wouldn't like her when she was disturbed. <laughs> So everybody in the audience, we have a good we have a good sized live audience. Everybody can hear us. Uh, uh, yes, uh, if you can hear us in the in the local chat, please. There is another sofa here uh, next to a, a canary between canary and and Joe. There's two seats, and these two seats may be filled with some special guests down the road. So we have an hour. Yeah, Joe, there will be guests. Who who do you think will it will will, will it be? Um, Jimmy Stewart? Oh no, he's dead. Yeah, I'm thinking Santa Claus. I'm oh, just wondering if he's, he's not too, too too fat to sit on the sofa. Oh, I might have to make the sofa bigger again. Yeah, he's, he doesn't do diets. You guys are very judgmental. I don't know if I like that. Yes, yes I am, and I'm proud of it. Thank you very much. Don't judge my judgmentality. 2015 is coming to a close. I want to uh, touch on a variety of subjects today. Uh, including, of course, the Gateway Program, because uh, I don't know nothing about the Gateway Program. Apparently, it's already live, or I don't know what's happening. Uh, and Jessica, as we talked yesterday briefly, I actually wanted to go through the orientation experience, but this whole holiday season uh, drove me nuts and I couldn't do it. So I will go through the orientation experience, signing up a new avatar, and stream that uh, on YouTube, and um, and then archive it, and then maybe comment a little bit on my experience as a as a as a new noob but could you guys and take it uh, you know canary take it jessica ed tell me about um what the gateway program is uh that you guys have have going now how does it work if i want to sign up what will happen to me if i log on and go in world uh to one of your gateways okay let me jump on this so um, from the start, users can go to uh, firestormviewer.org slash join-second-life, although that may change um, as Canary has been doing some amazing work. So new users hear from us through uh, Canary's marketing uh, skills. Um, they hear not actually not about us. It's not about Firestorm. They hear about Second Life uh, through us, and um, they sign up, create an account, they log in, and when they land, they will land at the orientation uh, island, which is um, basically a, a region 
um, with tutorials, fairly straightforward, a path that they can follow and they learn some really basic skills. Um, when they get to the end of that, they come to a sort of a cave and if they walk into that cave using experience keys, um, they will be suddenly transported into this gateway, these, these five regions here. Um, and these regions contain all kinds of different um, immersive experiences and, and um, opportunities to interact and learn, interact with objects in world, interact with the viewer, um, interact with humans, and um, with med peace contribution, interact with games as well. So uh, my question is, so, so you're signing up through firestormviewer.org, but my question would be what happens if people sign up through the Second Life website? They don't get funneled through your gateway system? No, those people will be funneled through Linen Labs, uh, their own, uh, sorry, Linen Lab uh, apostrophe mm -hmm. S. <laughs> I hate it when people say Linen Labs. Um, <laughs> they'll be funneled through their gateways um, and their landing every So the gateway program is actually on a trial basis right now. Linen Lab is sort of just experimenting and exploring um, the possibility of returning um, the program. Um, chances are there it, it's going to come back, but how they are going to screen um, applicants who want to have their own gateways and whatnot, that's sort of all kind of up in the air still. It sounds compelling uh, as you described with the with the content, and I'll, I, I'm going to bring in Kiana and Kess from Matt P in a second, but um, stupid question. I mean, if I'm a noob and I'm I hear about Second Life somewhere and I want to sign up, I mean, it, isn't it unlikely that I go that I know what Firestorm is? Well, and so there's going to be a little bit of confusion there for some folks, um, and it's going to be so. Linen Lab is still doing their own marketing um, and advertising. Essentially, we're going to be doing our own marketing and advertising Second Life, and so the opportunity is we get to market and advertise Second Life the way we want to advertise it, um, and uh, depending on where people hear from here about Second Life from, if they hear it from our advertisements or our social media or our, our efforts, if they hear it from us, then they'll come through our gateway. If they hear it through Linen Lab, then they, they'll go through the Linen Lab gateways. The idea is to expand, um, I think the idea from Linen Lab is to allow the community to uh, participate in promoting and advertising um, Second Life as well. And that's essentially what we're doing is trying to um, sort of spread the word in our own way. Mm -hmm. um, let me just say real quick, uh, we got a few dropouts. The audio is quite good, but I apologize for any dropouts that may or may happen uh, throughout the hour. Also, I got a, uh, an IM just now um, asking me, Drax, why do you go into Firestorm right away? Don't you want to talk about uh, the year 2015 since this is the last show of 2015? Uh, and we will do that. So patience, folks, we're going to cram it all, all into the hour. But uh, since we're here on the Firestorm, Storm Island, I did want to start uh, talking about that. So, Jessica, if I understand you correctly, the concept is, the concept that is now in trial, is to allow uh, groups to really kind of promote um, Second Life through their own channels, do the outreach, maybe buy ads on Google or whatnot. Um, Canary, um, what's, the, what's your concept of sort of promoting this? I mean, I think it's cool at the same time. It's kind of a could be could be pretty difficult. Yeah, I think I think it is. I think I think it's a great opportunity to sell the experience of of Second Life, and we're not focusing on the platform and the viewer. So we're focusing on if you, if you think about this, I think you've got to think of starting from scratch and going to foundation of um, a, approaching people in, in a new way and having a secondary channel to test. And so what we're doing is there's been a lot of um, people talking about, oh, we should market Second Life in a new way. And I think what we're seeing is that SL is 13 years old or nearly, and the user base is flat or declining. And there's a lot of new things coming that, you know, we've talked about Sansar before and people being concerned that Sansar might cannibalize the, the Second Life user base. So whether that's true or not, what we do have in our sort of back pocket is a really loyal Second Life user base that love the product and they want to see it remain. And, and so in order to see that happen, we want to give people an opportunity, as Jessica was saying, to maintain the Second Life user base levels. And so we can't just rely on, on Linden Lab to promote the platform. As users of any good company, we as users have to act to spread the word. And so we want to give people an opportunity to be part of the solution and not just the problem. 
So what we what we're going to be able to do is set up really cool ways for people to make sharing Second Life a cool thing to do, because we all know that Second Life is really cool and it's worth sharing. Um, and I've done surveys and in the recent and I can I can share some of that maybe if we have some time later. But we've we found that people really do want to share Second Life, but we don't necessarily have the means right now. Let me jump in here real quick. So if if I understand you correctly, the you you are sort of quote unquote banking on <clears throat> existing Second Life users when they uh, enthusiastically talk about Second Life with their sort of uninitiated friends that they can then share that and they will share the firestorm. Uh, ex uh, sign up experience rather than the official Second Life experience because, you know, Linden Lab has been, let's be honest, uh, not extremely <laughs> successful in in getting sort of these these numbers up through their own channels and they I would assume have a bigger marketing budget than you guys so they can buy ads, uh, and so they they couldn't get it going. Why, frankly, why would you be successful in what they have been unsuccessful in? You can't buy word of mouth advertising. Anyone will say word of <laughs> mouth is fair. the best advertising. That's what yeah. we're counting on. Well, for this, you you do you do you do need your own um, you know space in Second Life where people learn the basics. Um, would it perhaps be a good idea to sort of separate and create two options where you have one where people can create a page where you can sign up and join Second Life, and one where people have uh, the sign up page and also the in world tutorial area because you know i think that a lot of people would like to build this sort of welcome to second life this is what you can do but not everyone has the space or the prims you know to to build a uh, tutorial area well and it doesn't necessarily have to be a tutorial system either uh if you go and create a new account with through the linden lab api right now their registration portal uh you'll land at their um Remember what they're called the learning island i think learning they call it islands, yeah. yeah and there's not very much tutorials there I personally disagree with that. I think there should be some tutorials, some basics there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so kind of the gateway program is an opportunity for uh, residents to um, experiment with uh, with different approaches on um, uh, keeping new users. So uh, collecting new signups and converting them into permanent Second Life residents are two different things. I think, I f I'm pretty sure that um, we will do better with uh, conversion rates, which is uh, essentially number of signups that actually sign up on, the, on the, the registration portal versus number of residents who actually stayed in Second Life. I'm pretty sure that with the gateway that we have here, with Matt P's contributions here, that it, although we'll have fewer people signing up than yeah. in the lab because we don't have that marketing, uh, um, that marketing engine, I'm pretty certain that the numbers of people that do sign up through us and land in the gateways will will have a higher conversion rate. Th these people will stay in Second Life longer because it's a better first time experience. Will women in love keep track of these figures? Oh, absolutely. Yes, big time. That's Excellent. why it's an experiment. They want to see, I think Linden Lab also wants to find out and see how different um, uh, gateway approaches, different designs and, and um, ideas work. We're having a Facebook page that we're going to invite people to, with their RL profiles to share. Now, they don't have to link their RL to their SL, and this is the key here. They're still anonymous, uh, but we are asking them to say, hey, I do this. You don't need to know what I do here, but I do this, and I think it's cool. And so that's that's the that's the gist of, of this, is we, we're very targeted, and we have to use what we have, at the resources we have, which are, which are people's love of SL. But we really need people to put their their money where their mouth is, I suppose, and really, really, you know, say, do I want SL to continue? Do I want this thing to, uh, with the if, sand if, star if, coming if, along? Do I want it if, to stick around? If, yeah, if I may, I, I have something I'd like to add just a little bit to this. Uh, the Firestorm team has always been about the community. Uh, th that's been our basis. Our, our mission statement is to improve the Second Life experience for everybody. We're about the community. Um, we're not strictly saying, you, you know, come to our gateway, uh, we're, we're the best. We're saying, uh, you know, we need your help, folks. Let, let's get more people in Second Life. Let's get the community involved. Get more people coming into Second Life. If you want to come do our tutorials, fine. Uh, but we're not going to be limiting ourselves to ourselves. Uh, we recognize other areas like NCI, virtual ability, hobo helpers. There's a whole bunch of places out there that are willing to do this sort of thing. Um, come on, people. Let's make Second Life 
what it really can be by working together. Mm -hmm. This is really well said, Ed, and and um, I'm really excited that that this is starting, and I, I wish you the the best of success because I really want to see that uh, the Gateway program widely adopted and really you know being implemented and 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 supported also by Linden Lab. So I'm also assuming, and we're going to go to Kiana and Kess in a minute because you guys are adding content, and I was just going to say you know. The worst Mad P game to me is still a lot better than just sort of hanging out on a on an empty beach with a bunch of noobs who equally don't know what's going on. But my final question on 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 this subject: Is there anybody? Um, is everything automated, or are there actually live people holding people's uh, holding noobs' hands a little bit and answering questions? How is that um, uh, dealt with? Uh, if I can address this one, we're, we're in the process right now of um, um, adding uh, gateway, what we're calling gateway helpers. Uh, we're, we're actually started doing interviews yesterday, uh, interviewing people with, who've applied to do this. Uh, we will have classes uh, for the new residents as well. Um, we're going to have people there from all over Second Life with different languages uh, to help out as much as, po as humanly possible. Uh -oh. I think somebody just snuck in. Oh my God! I I see a Linden on on the sim. I I did I tell you guys we have a special guest. Oh dear! Everybody hide. Somebody is somebody is sort of going here and sitting down on a live program. Is it Oz Linden? What is what kind of show is this? Well, he's got a he's got a he's got a beard. Could we Santa Claus maybe? Hi Oz. What are you doing here? Hi. Well, I thought we've done so much new stuff lately that. It might be good to come talk about it. Wait a minute, Oz. I heard that uh, Linden Lab is not doing anything in Second Life anymore. I heard they kind of abandoned Second Life and are just doing Project Sansar and and Goggle Dee Goo. Oh, pay attention, Drax. Uh, that's what I. Heard. That's what the news told me. <laughs> you, should listen, you should listen to the Drax files more often. <laughs> oh my God! There's another Linden coming in. A a a veer Linden, a weird looking uh, monster of sorts. With a tail made of prims? I, I don't know. That, that sounds worried. kind of lookist or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Veer. Take a seat, please. Hey, folks. Thanks. We were just talking about the fact that Linden Lab has abandoned Second Life, and I don't know why. I guess that's why you guys are here, because you have no work to do, I guess, because uh, Linden Lab is not updating Second Life anymore. Um, but all the kidding aside, uh, before we go to to our Lindens here, Kiana and Kess, can you tell me what are you contributing to the Gateway program? How awesome is this? And is it even doable, whatever you're making, for a noob coming in and the noob doesn't even know how to dress him herself and then you throw a sophisticated Matt P game at them? Does that make sense? Uh, it completely makes sense. Have, have you played it yet? Uh, no, because the last game I played in Second Life was Loki Elliot's The Well, and Loki told me, hey, Drax, you can play it. I designed it so uh, even somebody who's not good at games can finish it in 20 minutes. It took me two and a half hours. <clears throat> so, no, I haven't played it. <laughs> okay. So, so maybe you should play a game that is aimed, you know, at, at newer residents. I think so. It, it is completely. We spent a lot of time um, making sure that the game... Um, made sense for new players that the instructions were very clear. Um, our aim is uh, to have uh, an interactive, um, immersive experience with, within the gateway um, that also helps players over that learning curve of understanding how their UI works, um, where to find things, you know, how to click things, how to collect things, and, and to read for information and follow instructions. And, as Jessica said, you've got, you know, the tutorials and then the, the game together. It gives them a very full um, learning experience. Um, I know from my experience in, in my other part of my second life as a club owner that, that we get a lot of um, new residents come in and they, they don't know. They don't know how to, um, they, they, they know two, maybe three things, you know, how to friend somebody, um, how to stand very close to somebody, um, and, um, you know, how to IM somebody. But they, they don't have the skills to actually use their viewer and, and that kind of thing. 
Um, so that was completely the aim. Right. So you're th you're you're making it a, a sort of a gamified um, orientation experience, I hear. So so while you're playing this game, yeah. you're learning the essentials of moving about in Second Life. Yeah. Plus, it's also giving them um, a, an idea of the kind of user created content. Um, and the, the scope of user-created content within Second Life mm -hmm. um, in, in a game format with some amazing um, prizes uh, at the end of it as well to, to, to get them started. Mm -hmm. And visually appealing. Uh, Kiana, uh, is it visually appealing? Always, of course. <laughs> I know. What a silly question, Rex. <laughs> well, describe it. We're on the radio. We're on the radio. How, how can I sort of envision <laughs> what you cooked up there? Um, well, we actually didn't do the build ourselves. Uh, that was done by Firestorm. They gave us um, different areas to choose from. And uh, we saw this um, sort of abandoned town. And it seemed to, to fit well with our ghost story. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's maybe maybe not the most beautiful beautiful area, but it's quite disturbing and uh, very We're very interesting. Word, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Very dirty can be pretty. And it takes advantage of uh, of experience keys and other features. Uh, yes, it uses the um, uh, mappy experience key um, by and it's it's HUD based, mm -hmm. so um, they collect. Um, but basically, they've got to find a certain number of ghosts within the, the town, solve a, solve a mystery, and find their way to the prize room and collect their prizes. And do you think? I mean, I, I'm I'm assuming that you're also collecting data. How th how this component then kind of uh, increases retention? I mean, I guess that's Canary's um, uh, endeavor there. That how all these individual components of 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 this program contribute to retention, uh, I assume? We hope to be able to get that sort of, uh, those metrics. Uh, basically, we, the team that we have, we watch fairly closely. Closely, We're watching the region, seeing how much traffic we're getting, uh, seeing how many new residents are actually coming through and doing the, uh, the ghost town. Um, we're... What areas they go to. I mean, there's, there's a learning without even realizing that they're learning because if you're doing something you're enjoying, you're not even thinking about that you're learning how to do something. You you just are sort of learning how to do it. So yeah, I completely agree. That, one of the things you know, that we one of the things that we certainly plan to do. Sorry, one of the things we certainly plan to do with each of the community gateway providers is to let them know how they're doing with with respect to retention, um, and you know. Probably in comparison to uh, how the flow of users that go through the, the Linden Lab Learning Island uh, gateways do. So we'll let them know whether they're doing better or worse or better or worse over time. Um, Oz, uh, before you guys uh, snuck onto the stage, um, I was informed that this is sort of a test and that then that might be expanded if it if it works well. Uh Oz, can you, before we go to your guys' special project uh, with, the, with the name of, uh, of some sort of Japanese um, uh, lunch item, or, well, you'll explain what, where Bento comes from, but uh, with the Gateway program, um, if this works out, if this is successful, what will happen, uh, Oz, um, in terms of broadening this? What, what do uh, communities have to... Uh, what 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 hoops do, do they have to jump through? How do how do they qualify if they want to become a gateway um, program themselves? Well, I don't know what the the qualification requirements are going to turn out to be. I'm I'm not sure that we've really worked that out. Basically, it you know it's mostly going to be a measure of what's your what's your commitment to it. Right. Uh, the firestorm team has demonstrated very significant commitment to this. They've built out a lot of stuff. They've staffed up for it. They've they've done a lot of preparation, uh, and and we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, we have a number of other uh, communities that are interested in doing uh, the same thing and having uh, their own gateways, and we're happy to work with them to get those set up over time. We're we're still in the shakedown phase of rebuilding the technology for supporting gateways. Uh, the world has changed quite a lot since. 
our older gateway program, the compliance requirements that we have to meet and, and privacy requirements that we have to meet and so forth are very much different than they were last yeah. time around. And there's some, some rebuilding that needs to be done to support that. But uh, that's all ongoing. I, I remember one of the components was, ser and, and you, you touched on this, is that you have to, uh, you know, prove that you have a, a personnel to kind of handle the the influx of people somehow is is that going to be one requirement well uh, uh, something on the uh, on the order of you have to be able to to convince the people administering the program that you can handle what happens right um, we weren't you know nobody wants potential second life users to get funneled into something that's obviously going to break right that's going to obviously going to be a a, a failure um, so, uh, you know, we'll have some some attempt to measure whether or not you're making a serious effort. I guess um, I'm. That's not my area. Uh, I'm not involved in the specifics of that. But um, I'm I'm worrying about the making the technology to support it robust. Then let's go. Uh, let's go to to Oz and Veer's area. Let's veer to that into that direction. Ooh. See that that was a good one, Joe. I worked on that all week. Uh, you, I thought I thought you did. Yeah, nothing comes spontaneous. So you you actually prepared for this episode? Well, that's and first. I bet Veer never heard that one before. Either. <laughs> well, Joe, I like to prepare. Uh, I I put uh, new flip flops on, as people can see who are in the audience. People are listening on the radio. They they can't do that. You're listening to the Drax Files Radio Hour with Joe Yardley, and uh, this is the 100th episode. And people in the audience can grab a baseball cap. There is a uh, the 100 uh, sign in the back here next to the snowman. You can grab a baseball cap and you can wear it or you can give it to a friend or an enemy or whatever. You can also support this show. You can take out a voluntary subscription. We have a lot of voluntary subscribers and we thank them. And this is a community effort. I'm trying to get good guests here. I'm trying to keep Joe in line. I mean, there's so many jobs that I have to do. Um, anyway, so you can take out a voluntary subscription. You can you can do a, a banner ad um, and we'll be back in the new year. This is the last show of the year and we'll be back in the new year with lots of high profile guests, including Sherry Turkle from MIT and Nick Yee, researcher who did a huge survey about why gamers play certain games and Second Life is a component on that too. So we, we talk about other things uh, a little bit other than Second Life every once in a while. We also talk about goggles. Okay, so we got Veer and Oz here, um, and these guys have been working on something that I think is insanely cool and was just very recently um, publicly announced. Oz, uh, why don't you please summarize what Project Bento is all about? Well, Project Bento is, is about extending the avatar skeleton, uh, providing some new bones that let you do much more interesting and expressive things than you've ever been able to do before. And Veer here is the, uh, is the technology lead for it. He's been working on it since, well, he, he pitched it last, was it last winter? Let me jump in here real quick uh, before Veer comes in. This is so insanely cool because it adds joints and bones to the Second Life skeleton that will enable, and people are already playing with it, will enable s sophisticated facial expressions. Your fingers are going to be wiggling around. Your tails are going to be flapping around. Uh, and Veer, you, you initially pitched this and... Where are we at right now? I mean, is the skeleton ready to go? Can people build things on the Second Life skeleton now and 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 make really really lively uh, humanoids or fantasy creatures right now? People can download our project viewer and visit any supported region on a DD, which is most regions, but probably not a hundred percent. Some of the regions are maybe configured differently. Um, we do have some, some kind of designated test regions where we're hoping people will mostly go to. Uh, when they go to those regions, then they can upload uh, or test out content that's rigged to the new joints, and they can play around with the, the various new, new things we've added. Um, 
I, I can go into a bit more detail on what's there if, if you'd like. Or, uh... Please do. So we have we have fingers. You can move fingers. We have face. How does it break up uh, in, in, in the skeleton? Where are those joints and those bones located? Yeah, well, uh, as you say, the, the biggest chunk of, uh, of new content we've added is additional bones for the face and uh, for the fingers. Uh, hands turn out to be awfully complicated. There's a lot of bones there, but uh, people complain if you try to take some of them away. So we've, uh, we've got a, a large number of joints added for, for both of those areas. Um, you know, for the face, we've added uh, jaw so you can open and close uh, your mouth. We've got uh, uh, joints around the lips, around the eyebrows, the forehead, the cheeks, the nose. Um, we've uh, also added ear bones so that you can uh, you can wiggle your ears uh, independently <laughs> if you want. Um, as, as long as Drex doesn't get one more than one mouth, we're okay. <laughs> Veer, can I ask a question and Oz uh, jump on this too? Why are you guys doing this now? Why didn't you do this in 2005? Uh, well, I well, wasn't here in 2005, so I can't yeah. really speak to that. Neither of us, neither of us were. Uh, so that, that's, well, that's, that's before our time. We we can't uh, we can't speak to that at all. Uh, I'm I'm sure part of it would have been the the capabilities of the systems at the time. Of course, uh, you know, the graphics cards and and computers have uh, gotten a, a tiny bit better since those days, and. Uh, uh, well, I that's a good we'll, question. Uh, be taking some that brings up a question. That. Is this going to, because people are going to want to know, is this going to um, add to the existing load of Second Life on computers? People want to know, are they going to have to upgrade their computers? Yeah, well, yeah, well it, that's... Uh, it's sorry, go ahead. It's going to add some load. Everything does, right? We can't, we can't do anything new that, that, that's not going to add some load. But we've done quite a bit of studying of, of what that is, and I don't know, Beer, you can kind of share some of the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we did some uh, we did some kind of load testing with some uh, some test content rigged to additional joints, and uh, you know we we see that the the load the effect on load you know varies depending on whether you're using hardware or software skinning, and it varies uh, depending on the particular graphics card you're using. Uh, you know, there, I, I can't say well, I can't kind of give one number to say, uh, you know, what the impact is going to be, and uh, you know, also the impact is really going to depend on what kind of content people create, right? The the more joints you use, the more vertices your meshes have, you know, rigged to those joints. Um, you know, of course, more more complex content always affects performance. Um, you know, you make a more complicated mesh, it's it's more work for, for everyone's viewer to draw it. So, um, you know, we, we don't really know the, the whole story on, in, on performance impact until we get this out into the world and get people uh, testing it kind of in groups together. So that's going to be one of the things we're going to be doing more testing on, uh, 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 on a DED over the next few weeks. I hope we'll get a chance to do some some kind of load testing, but you know the overall numbers were pretty encouraging. We we can see that uh, adding additional uh, joints has an effect, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't really overwhelm the the performance uh, compared to a lot of other things. And we're we're hoping we'll continue to see those kinds of uh, results as people uh, you know get a chance to to kind of pile onto it a bit more. So a, a, a very very basic question: um, Why is it called Bento? Oh well, uh, that's that's an interesting question. Uh, well, thank you. We, I'm not I'm not sure if we have an interesting answer, but I'll I'll give it a <laughs> shot. Uh, you know, we we had to have some kind of code name to work with, and uh, we in the in the Boston office we we do find ourselves in the uh, in the local Japanese restaurant fairly often. So I think the uh, the inspiration to call it bento might have had something to do with uh, hitting the sushi a little too hard. <laughs> around the same time, um, but uh, also, also just just the you know the, the idea of a sort of a, a box full of goodies. I, I kind of like the image there. Hopefully, nice. that's what uh, people will feel like they're getting when they get a chance to try a box it, full of the, goodies. Join... The... It, it has it has been my policy to let uh, each of the lead engineers on our on our major project choose their own code name. So, uh, hence uh, Bento for for this one and 
Valhalla for new shiny chrome for the for the chrome embedded. Oh, and, Valhalla! That very good choice there too. Very good choices. Yeah. Let me say here that uh, this is so cool, and there's already a few videos out there. I'm documenting uh, Project Bento and with the Drax Files video series, and my deadline for this video is the um, end of January. And we're uh, tentatively have scheduled uh, the 14th of January, a big showcase party on Aditi. So if you're a content creator or if you know a content creator, tell them about Project Bento. Tell them to get in there and get working and make either humanoid content or fantastic uh, content. I personally, and I know Coyote Linden as well, we want a, a centaur. So uh, please make a centaur and show up on the 14th. Um, we'll announce that more precisely, the, 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 the time and date, um, when we have that content party. And I'll be filming there, and Torley will be filming there, and it will be glorious, and this is a glorious day. M my last question on this matter, Veer and Oz, do you think that with Project Bento, if this really works out and the load is working out and, 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 and all the data transfers smoothly. Is this the path to real-time facial tracking in Second Life, possibly? Oh, there's yeah. a lot more to that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this keep could talking, be one of the first steps uh, uh, toward that. If, if you try to go in that direction, obviously you can't, uh, you, you can't move the face until you've got the, the joints to move. Um, but uh, that's uh, it, it. It's an interesting. Uh, uh, it's an interesting idea. We've had various, uh, you know, proposals out there for, for doing mocap, and we're trying to be very responsive to what we think the most immediate need is at the time we have resources available. So we've been doing a uh, um, couple of twice yearly um, get together and. Um, talk through, we, we meet with our customer support people and our operations people and the developers and the product people and we hold in feedback that we get from all directions and we try to figure out what's the most responsive thing we can do to meet the needs of Second Life and to improve it in a dramatic way. And that's where Bento came from, was one of those meetings. And, um, and we'll, you know, we'll be, we, we do them a couple of times a year and uh, we we decide what we're going to try to tackle next. Um, right. there, like, we've got a huge list of possible things, including yeah, including half of them like probably the probably sent by Marie. <laughs> Is Bento related to R and D bear undertaken for Project Sansar, and and does it mean that we might one day be able to take our SL avatars into Sansar? Oh, that would be nice. Uh, we're well, not the Sansar team, so no, we we're, we're can't definitely... make any statement. What Sansar is or isn't doing, really? Uh, we can't. Oh, that's how the Obama administration does it. They say, "Ah, oh, we don't." Well, that's not our department. <laughs> <laughs> Vera and I are the you know on the Second Life engineering team. We are a hundred percent dedicated to making Second Life better. That's what we do. Yay. Sansar is doing their thing, and we're doing our thing. Guys, uh, the hour is drawing to a close. Uh, let me, uh, I hope people can, uh, the audio is good. There is a few glitches, a few outages here on my recording. I apologize for that. There was, there was an experiment to do this in Second Life Voice. It's holding up quite nicely. So I'm not complaining. The hour is drawing to a close. Um, I want to ask all the participants about 2015, what they really, really loved about Second Life about their specific Second Life experience, what they hated about it, uh, and then what they wish for 2016. Uh, and then maybe we can take a few questions for the Lindens. Um, you can type that in open chat. But first, Kiana, what was awesome about your Second Life 2015 um, and what was not so great? What was not great was all these talks about, oh my God, Second Life is dying. There was this constant panic. and uh, Was that Sansa related, you think? Was it Accelerate because Second Life is dying? I mean, that's like a meme that's been going on for 12 years. I think so, and people have been, yeah, people have been talking about numbers going down. And at the same time, Matt B has had the most successful year ever. Like uh, our community has grown, our revenue has grown. 
and like it has been like constant growth and uh we're doing awesome so i'm i'm hoping for more of that next year obviously so i, I think that there's so much potential here and i really really love what the guys here at firestorm are doing and i just hope that everybody gets to to realize the potential mm -hmm. kiss how about you what was good what was bad and what do you wish for 2016 okay well i mean obviously um being part of the MAPI team and everything that that we achieved um, within that as as Kiana said in in terms of our growth it was our uh, best year ever um but we still have some challenges uh going into 2016 um around um second life residents understanding the value um of second life experiences and entertainment and expecting to pay for it um, and being sort of quite upfront about that being able to monetize what we do so that we're not doing things at, you know that, that there is a um that, that people can can get paid you know for their work and that kind of thing so we, we still have some work to do around that so that's an issue uh in in your field i can imagine it's an issue that people say what why do we have to pay for this game you know i mean that's ridiculous but on the other hand they shell out uh couple thousand or whatever for the latest uh i don't know and flip -flops. Flip fl my flip-flops are oh, wait a minute yeah no it's exactly that people will spend including myself you know a fortune on mesh avatars and hair and and shoes and and things like that but um some of them will even be very critical if you ask them to pay 100 lindens for a game that will give them hours of of entertainment um, and it's almost like I have a right for you to entertain me for nothing um, from uh, at one extreme. Most of the people that we work with, the people that are already in the MAPI's VR group, more than happy to pay and very supportive of us. But it's those people in the middle that, that we need to um, help them to understand the value that... The, not necessarily the costs involved, but the value of what we do and why we need to charge for it, what, what we have to pay out and that kind of thing. My personal highlight, it's a huge job and it's something I bang on about quite, quite a lot. Um, the, my personal highlight was the Mappy Celebrity Auction Yay. in September for um, uh, Feed a Smile. Yay. That was yeah, it that was, was amazing. the that. most amazing experience. Um, that was really amazing. Quite a few yeah. of the people uh, in the audience and and um, in, in our uh, up here on the stage were involved in that as well. So thank you. Yes. It's absolutely the highlight of my year. Have you guys? How many people have noticed that group chat lag like, doesn't exist anymore, and that we don't have bake fail anymore, and that we don't have, you know, that we got mesh and mesh actually renders most of the time now, and like Second Life has gotten reliable, and um, I mean, how many people have noticed how much Second Life has improved in the last, well, not just the last year, but the last two years? Um, yeah, well, little lab. You generally I, people in second life only notice things when they go wrong <laughs> well that's the thing so and and yeah. so i want to take this opportunity to to say hey guys little lab's been doing like an amazing amount of work um improving things the best thing in 2015 is that second life is like improving despite the doomsday sensor scenario um second life has come a long way and, and kudos to linen lab i second that uh ed uh, 2015 uh ed, the, the... The, the big plus for me for 2015 was this community gateway project. Uh, uh, it's something that's, our team's always been about as community, and I think we can make a good contribution here. Um, the, the bad thing for me was uh, the community gateway project uh, because of the amount of work <laughs> it's causing. <laughs> We're going nuts uh, trying to accomplish a ton of things in a very limited amount of time with very limited resources. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the future, what would I like to see in 2016? I'd like to see more of the community actually uh, stand up and uh, give credit to Linden Lab for what they actually are doing, for the amount of work that they're doing behind the scenes that we don't see, as well as the improvements that they're making, the commitment that they're actually making to keeping Second Life going. Mm. It's a Linden Love Fest here. Canary, 
I um, I love that we have so much interest in Second Life from people with all sorts of opinions about it, positive ones, negative ones. We have a very engaged user base, and I'm really looking forward to continuing the conversation in 2016, especially surrounding this Firestorm Gateway project. I think uh, we're, we're going to create opportunities for SLRs to share their love of SL with the wider world, which is super exciting, and not everybody's going to answer that call. And that's totally okay. But for those that really want to, stay tuned for our call. And we're, we're going to be reaching out to you really soon so that you can get involved. And uh, we're super excited about that. Well, uh, I'm just reading here in the local chat. Uh, Janet uh, Riardra says, and that might be a marketing idea for you, Canary. I will tell my girlfriends that this is a game where we shop and have parties. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. And we'll, we'll be able to give you an actual page, a landing page about just that, that you can share with them. Veer, how was your 2015, the highlights? Uh, and if you want to share the the lowlights, uh, uh, Second Life related. Oh, well, it, it was uh, it was great for me. I mean, when I first uh, first started at the lab uh, several years ago, uh, and, and I found out that it was, you know, the first question I, I asked myself when I came is, you know, can I be a, a weird dinosaur catfish thing? And it <laughs> turned out that I could. Uh, and, you know, now, now I, you know, I have the potential to be an, an even weirder, more catfishy dinosaur thing with wings or, uh, you know, moving fingers or whatever. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's, seriously, it's, it's been really exciting to be able to uh, work on the bento project and i'm really looking forward to seeing what people are going to be doing with it um that's been uh, that's been a lot of fun and you know veer i know what you're going to be doing in 2016 because i've been following you guys around documenting the bento project so i know that what you really want to do in 2016 is learn <laughs> blender inside out right <laughs> yeah well that probably would help but uh yeah actually, actually i'm you know i'm hoping we'll be able to uh do more more avatar greatness in the future, but uh, you know. Anyway, the you know I guess the only low light is that uh, the you know these things always turn out to be more complicated than you think, and it's uh, uh, you know, Oz hasn't given me too much grief about uh, uh, my estimates of the difficulty of the project, but uh, you know it has turned out to be a bit bigger than we had hoped, and uh, we're uh, we're just relieved to be able to uh, get it in a testable state by the end of the year. Seeing all the amazing stuff that that people do with what we produce, right? And when we when we get something new out in the hands of, of Second Life users, watching what they do with it, experiences, um, I'm really, really looking forward to Bento. Some of the things people are building with experiences are really, really, really neat. I think they've just scratched the surface. Um, and that's that's really great. Uh, I've, uh, I've been able to bring a, a bunch of new developers into the Second Life development team, and I'm, I'm just, so excited about how great the team I have is. They're just a fantastic group. And Joe, I know what your highlight was uh, moderating this show with me, and you're looking forward to doing this show with me. Yeah, 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 really. Yeah, that was fantastic. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you're, know, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you. Go go get a haircut. Anyway, my my... my Highlights of the year are pretty much all 1920s Berlin related, so I won't bother people with that too much. Um, and the low point of the year is that I'm still not inside Project Sansar. And what I'd like to see for the future is just very egocentrical. Um, I just want to see 24 hour day cycles. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> 24-hour day cycles. I wish I, I could say you heard it here first, but you've been blogging about this <laughs> and pounding on doors. 24-hour day cycles. Okay. You've converted Ebby, so yes, know, I know. Odds, odds aren't bad uh, that you'll get that. Uh, yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, I, can, you know, I've, I've get, I gave him lots of bottles of virtual snaps <laughs> in Berlin. <laughs> The the hour uh, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, as I said, we're gonna we're gonna keep it tight. This was a real pleasure. Thanks everyone for coming. The the, the holiday season is always very hec hectic, and and I really appreciate everyone's time. Uh, I'll edit this show together a little little tighter and push this out on uh, Christmas Day. So uh, when you're in a if you find yourself in a conversation with family members. And it becomes awkward. You can always excuse yourself and say, I got to go and listen to 
listen to the Drax Files. We're having the Drax Files instead of the Queen's Speech this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Drax, they're calling you a queen. Oh, oh yeah. That's I guess that's good, right? Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Ed, you your last yeah. Ed, you have the last word, and then we'll wrap it up. I'd like to wish all of you a happy holidays and a wonderful Aww. new year. And let's make Second Life rock. So that was it. That was the last show of 2015, taped a couple days ago. If you're listening to this on Christmas Day, uh, it might be your excuse to get away from a contentious family dinner uh, where people scream at each other about uh, Donald Trump. You want to escape, and you uh, you earned that right to escape from these types of conversations. Thank you all for for a fabulous year. Thank you for listening again. We really appreciate your support so much. And thank you, Lindens, who uh, gave us Project Bento, among many other things this year uh, for Second Life. Lindens working hard on Second Life despite Project Sansar and uh, Blocks World. Second Life is not forgotten, and we know that, and we appreciate it. And I know you do too, uh, dear listener. Please read Loki Elliott's... Um, Summary of 2015, please read in our page uh, three-part blog post about 2015. It's all in there. It's a really nice uh, year-end review. And don't forget, January 14th, I'll be filming with Torley. Torley will be filming as well a party um, showcase where people can showcase their Project Bento creations. I personally want a centaur. I mentioned that many times, but... You can create whatever you want, bring it, and we'll film it. Uh, lastly, I promised also many times to stream um, the the welcome experience of the Firestorm Orientation Island plus the Mad P game, and I will do that, I swear, before the new year, and I'll link the video to this blog, and I'll publicize it elsewhere. I'll be streaming that on YouTube. Uh, the announcements will go out through the various social media channels. If you happen to be around, come on in uh, the chat and watch me live and give me advice. Um, I'll try to be not too noobish. So I'm going to be signing up a complete new avatar and see how the orientation experience fares and put that up on YouTube. Um, that's it. That's it for the show. Happy New Year. It'll be glorious. And thanks again for listening. Bye. You would even say it is a weekly production of Basic Jax Entertainment. The show is supported by Maven Homes, Giza Creations, Botanical, Strawberry Sing, Abranimations, Eros Avatars, Caravel Design, Avacon, The Cube Republic, Fateware by Damien Fate, The Avazines Publication Family, What Next, Bright Canopy, Dutchy Furniture, Landscapes Unlimited, Dwarfins, The Den, Following Gods Incorporated, Feroche SL, Giant Snail Races every Saturday, Kona Stream, and Death Row Designs. Contact the show via Skype, Drax Files, Avatar Drax Files, or email radio at draxfiles.com. Yeah, I should probably mention that the song here is uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer by my friend uh, Jan Seerfeld from the German. Um, uh, jazz metal band Panzer Panzer Ballet. Enjoy. They're not in SL, by the way. Not quite yet. I'll keep working on them. <laughs>